people have said they actually saw more when they watched it in their homes on the Blu-ray, which is very exciting for us that they can do that, but it also speaks to the problem of the in-cinema experience and how do we get those light levels up so that you can see all that detail that that's there. To us, it is emphatically not about resolution. It is about color space. It is about uh, you know brighter light levels for 3D presentations. It's about higher frame rates. Uh, you know, one of the things that is exacerbated in the 3D presentation is what I talked about the scrolling, because we, we're used to it in a 2D presentation. In 3D, it stands out more because everything else is real, more real to you. So the scrolling stands out. The higher frame rate removes that from the process. So if, if you can do those type of things and, and get more theaters through digital, the higher frame rates and be a brighter presentation. Like, you know, TVs at, at home today, you know, they, they are bright than what you get in the cinema. And that's one of the things that people have experienced in looking at, you know, the Avatar Blu-ray. What we want to try and do with Avatar, I think this is what you should try to do with any film, is we try to create a production paradigm that gave the, the actors and the director the most flexibility in their process that technology oftentimes is a limiting factor. We, in fact, wanted to make technology an enabling factor, that it enabled Jim to, to work with the cast at the same intimacy on Avatar that he did on Titanic with Kate and Leo, or that he did with, you know, in the past on his, on his other films. And, and that's what I think is the great thing about, you know, what technology enables. It's, again, it's empowering actors to play characters they cannot otherwise play. So, John, thank you so much for taking a moment to speak with us. As a producer, do you see uh, the future for other producers is to really get involved in understanding the technical developments of equipment, filmmaking? But will that really help a producer moving forward? Uh, I think absolutely. You know, it's about enabling us to tell stories. And that's what technology does. And people who are afraid of technology are going to limit their craft. And I don't care whether you're, you're working as a prop master or a special effects person or as a producer. You have to understand what technology enables you to do. And, and if you can push technology to, to be an enabling factor and not a limiting factor, you are bettering yourself and bettering the creative product you're working on. Do you suggest that people really acquire that type of knowledge to really help them? You know, I think people should acquire it in on-the-job training. I think that the, uh, there's a concern I have that people who go to trade schools to learn the, the crafts of our industry. And I think those are too technology centric and they're not the big enough picture because you know I think it's as important as we're going to school as we're learning to, to learn about history and philosophy and, and those type of things to apply them to, to our, our films. So I think that you know it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Do you find it now difficult moving forward where people know how much Avatar made? Is it harder for you as a producer to try to maneuver deals and really work with uh, development strategies? You know, first of all, it comes down to the people you work with. We had an incredible team on Avatar. We have some of those people still working with us. They're, they're going to plan on working with us in the future. We have their deals in place. They're excited. They know that we make our movies fiscally responsibly. We don't overpay and we don't underpay. We look to create a good team environment and make people feel a part of the process. There are people on the outside, oh, here comes Avatar, it's our payday. You know, we won't be in business with those people. There are enough options out there for us to find the people who want to do it because they have a passion about doing it. Are you hoping for greater developments in the 3D camera technology and are you working with people like Vince Pace who is very involved with uh, Avatar's development? You know, interestingly enough, I don't think we need that much more development in the 3D cameras. Um, I think people like Vince Pace and the Fusion Camera, it's there. They're shooting live events. If you could shoot a live event and have it look at the quality that I've seen some of Vince's material come back live at, you can do, you know, a movie where we have the time to edit and do all those things. I think it's the in-theater. I think that something that Avatar illustrated to people is that the cinema experience is still a special experience and it rekindled that, 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 that feeling. How do we continue to advance that? How do we continue to push exhibition to, to go to higher frame rates, to come up with brighter systems, to look for at lasers 10 years, 15 years down the road where we're creating something different? 
it's number one, it's human nature to want to preserve the communal experience. So I don't care what happens on the internet, I don't care what happens, you know, handheld devices, people are still going to want to go to the theaters. We're, it's a visual art form though, and we need to keep that in mind. It's the visual presentation that's going to separate it from everything else.